In this lesson, we're going to cover setting up a GitHub account in your first repository and also installing the GitHub desktop client and cloning the repository you created to your local computer. In case you came across this lesson from some other place other than the, our lesson homepage, you can get to the general page of the lessons that we provide by going to vanderbilt.lt slash code graph. So the first thing that you need to do in order to use GitHub is to actually set up a, an account and a repository. <clears throat> Just to review sort of the overall scheme of things, we have two parts of the system, stuff that's going on in your lo local computer, but also stuff that's going on online in the cloud. So at this, in this part of the lesson, we're going to be focusing on the online, online part in the cloud. We'll be, and we'll be using the web interface uh, to interact with the GitHub repository that you create. So there are uh, several things that we need to do to set this up. The first thing that you need to do is to get a GitHub an account by going to github.com. And after you have that account, then you need to create a new repository. So those are the steps that we will talk about right now. If you go to github.com, it'll look something like this. And if you don't have an account already, you'll have an opportunity to go through um, the sign up process. And we'll not um, go over that because it's fairly self explanatory and because I already have an account. So um, if you already have an account, then you can go through the uh, sign-in process. When you log in, you won't see as much stuff as I see here probably if you're a new user, but you should see a button over in the left by repositories that says new. So you can click on that to create a new repository. If you're at another place on GitHub, you can go to this plus sign in the upper right corner drop it down and pick a new repository and open a new repository from any other screen. So when I click on the new repository um, option, I am presented with some settings that I need to set. The repository name needs to be unique within your GitHub account, but uh, it doesn't have to be globally unique. So as long as you don't reuse the name of another repository, that's okay. So I'm going to call this uh, project one. If I want, I can add a description. I also have the choice of whether I want to make this uh, public or private repository. There are some limitations on the number of private repositories you can have, but you can have an unlimited number of public repositories. Since I um, don't care whether anybody sees this or not, I'm going to go ahead and let it be public. Uh, then we want to check add a README file. Uh, we'll talk more about the README file and what it's for later, but you definitely want to have one of those. Um, Get ignore is uh, a, another possibility. If you are going to be writing code, then it's probably a good idea to add a git ignore file. You have the choice of a number of different programming languages. What git ignore does is to basically ignore some of the housekeeping files that you um, produce and don't really want to publish to GitHub. So when you're working on your local computer, if it uh, has some sort of um, useless files that are needed just for managing the software. Uh, the templates, the git ignore templates are smart enough to know which files to ignore. If you're not using this for coding, um, you can just ignore it. Uh, the other thing is a license. Uh, it's a good idea to choose a license. Um, if you're writing open source software, you will probably want to pick one of the um, GPL 3.0 or MIT license. If you want to basically make your work available to anyone, you can choose Creative Commons Zero. If you don't want to make your work publicly available and open, then uh, you'll have to 
make some other decisions. I'm going to go ahead and pick uh, GPL 3.0. Now I'll click on repository and it's now creating my new repository and it will take me to that repository. So up in the upper right, I can see here's my account. Here's the new repository. <clears throat> And here are the three files that I created. The license shows me the details of the license that I picked for this repository. The git ignore is a bunch of uh, technical junk that I don't really care about, um, so I don't need to really worry about that. The readme.md file, however, is an important file. The readme.md file is what's being displayed on the screen when a person initially lands on your repository. Um, so if I click on this, I'll basically see the same thing as what I saw on my repository landing page. This is the place where you have an opportunity to tell people what this repository is about if they come to your GitHub site and want to know what you're working on. So I'm not going to edit this right now because we will do that in a later lesson. But these are basically the basic parts of a um, repository when you started out.